In all the previous videos, we were discussing about watershed management, various interventions that are made in the watershed management. We have studied about the interventions that are made in ridge line, drainage line, and farm. So we are reached to the end of watershed management. So while explaining in the previous video also I used to explain that all these arrangements that are done in the drainage line or in the farm pond or in the ridge area, it will enhance the amount of water that will be stored in our earth dams. Earth dams are basically the end point of our watershed management. So the water that has been retained by these several arrangements that are done with interventions, so the water that is being uh, reduced to flow or made to recharge the groundwater will be collected in the earth dam itself. So earth dam is basically the water harvesting structure for the entire watershed area. So we basically know what is what, what earth dam is. Earth dam is a construction. Uh, it is a structure which is constructed across a river as a barrier to stop the flow of water and to harvest the water. Okay. So earth dam is basically made up of. Uh, the locally available material itself so we don't import any other material from the outside we try to investigate the soil that is available in the area itself and by using that soil by understanding the property of the soil we will be constructing a barrier okay so it is cost effective it is economical we all know this thing because as a civil engineer we already studied this there is another subject called as extensive lab in which we also studied the design part but still in this uh, subject also we are going to understand the design of earthen dams. So before we jump into the design of earthen dams, we will try to understand what are the objectives of earthen dam is. So there are uh, few objectives which we all know. Uh, the first objective is that to store water. We store or pound the water in the upstream side and that water will be used when there is a scarce condition. So in monsoon period we store the water, in non-monsoon period we use that water. And there are some catchments where during the monsoon itself we could not be able to get the proper rainfall. There is there is a dry spell. Dry spell means a duration in the monsoon season where you will not be getting ample amount of water. Already there are crops which are grown in the farms, but there is no water that is available because of scanty amount of rainfall or or because of the dry spells. So in those times the water that is collected in the watershed can be used in order to have in order to harvest our farm ponds or in order to irrigate our farm ponds. So this is these are the objectives. The, the, the third important objectives with respect to our earthen dam uh, is the percolation of water. So that's why the earthen dams are also called as percolation tanks in case of watershed management. So what is percolation tank? Percolation tank is, uh, is something where the water stored in the surface will percolate into the soil and it will recharge the groundwater. So this is the, these are the three objectives that we have. First thing is that we we'll store the water and that stored water can be used in the non-monsoon period or the stored water can be also used in case of dry spell within the monsoon period. And the third objective would be to make sure the groundwater will be recharged from these percolation tanks. So by understanding these objectives, we could be able to understand what is the impact or importance of the earthen dams in case of our watershed management. So in the figure I would like to show you uh, some of the uh, sections of earthen dams. You have already studied this. There are three types of earthen dams. One is homogeneous earthen dam, then there is a diaphragm earthen dams, then there is the core earthen dam. Okay? So you can see these are different types of uh, earthen dams we have. This is something like a homogeneous one. Then we have this a barrier over here. This is this is the central core we have. Then this is a zone type we can also call. Okay? zone type or diaphragm type of embankment. So there are different type of embankments. Basically uh, the kind of structure or the cross section that we decide is uh, defined from the locally available material and also the strength, soil strength uh, of the locally available material. So based on that we will be deciding what kind of section to be considered. Okay. Now uh, all these arrangements that are done in the drainage line or in the farm pond or in the ridge area it will enhance the amount of water that will be stored in our earth dams. Earth dams are basically the end point of our watershed management. So the water that has been retained by these several arrangements that are done with the interventions, so the water that is being uh, reduced to flow or made to recharge the groundwater will be collected in the earth dam itself. So earth dam is basically the water harvesting structure for the entire watershed area. So we basically know what is what, what earth dam is. Earth dam is a construction. 
uh, even the structure which is constructed across a river as a barrier to stop the flow of water and to harvest the water okay so a dam is basically made up of uh, the locally available material itself so we don't import any other material from the outside we try to investigate the soil that is available in the area itself and by using that soil by understanding the property of the soil we will be constructing a barrier okay so it is cost effective it is economical we all know this thing because as a civil engineer we already studied this there is another subject called as extensive lab in which we also studied the design part but still in this subject also we are going to understand the design of earthen dams so before we jump into the design of earthen dams we will try to understand what are the objectives of earthen dams so there are a uh, few objectives which we all know uh, the first objective is that to store water we store or pound the water in the upstream side and that water will be used when there is a scarce condition so in monsoon period we store the water in non monsoon period we use that water and there are some catchments where during the monsoon itself we could not be able to get the proper rainfall there is there is a dry spell dry spell means duration in the monsoon season where you will not be getting ample amount of water already there are crops which are grown in the farms but there is no water that is available because of scanty amount of rainfall or or because of the dry spells so in those times the water that is collected in the watershed can be used in order to have in order to harvest our farm ponds or not to irrigate our farm ponds so this is these are the objectives the, the, the third important objectives with respect to our earthen dam Uh, is the percolation of water so that's why the earthen dams are also called as percolation tanks in case of watershed management so what is percolation tank percolation tank is something where the water stored in the surface will percolate into the soil and it reaches the ground water so this is the these are the three objectives that we have first thing is that we store the water and the stored water can be used in the non monsoon period or the stored water can be also used in case of dry spell within the monsoon period and the third objective would be to make sure the ground water will be recharged from this percolation tanks so by understanding these objectives we could be able to understand what is the impact or importance of the earthen dams in case of our watershed management so in the figure i would like to show you uh, some of the uh, sections of earthen dams you have already studied this there are three types of earthen dams one is homogeneous earthen dam then there is a diaphragm earthen dams then there is the core earthen dam okay so you can see these are different types of uh, earthen dams we have this is something like a homogeneous one then we have this a barrier over here this is this is a central core we have then this is a zone type we can also call okay zone type or diaphragm type of embankment so there are different type of embankments basically uh, the kind of structure or the cross section that we decide is uh, defined from the locally available material and also the strength soil strength uh, of the locally available material so based on that we will be deciding what kind of section to be considered okay now uh, let us look into some of the criteria through which we can be able to select the site for construction of earth dams so as you can see there are list of conditions through which we could be able to optimize the selection of our earth dam so before we understand all these points what we'll do is we'll try to understand what are the components of our earth dams so we know there are uh, three big structures hydraulic structures which are to be constructed for completion of any earth dam first is basically the earth dam embankment uh, So the embankment is completely made up of soil material, as you can see in this figure over here. And then we have surplus weir. Surplus weir enables the excess amount of water to be disposed to the downstream side. Then we have sluice, which is not shown in this figure. So sluice is the hydraulic structure which is constructed in order to extract the water that is being stored in the earthen dam. Now let us uh, try to briefly understand all these points and what are the importance of all these points. So first, we will look into this uh, condition called as balance between catchment area and storage capacity. So to understand this, what we will do is uh, we will try to classify our given catchment. So the classification of catchment is done with respect to good, average, and uh, poor condition. So what do we call it as a good uh, catchment area? Good catchment area is such catchment area where we can store the ample amount of water. Or like for example, what we do is that we will calculate the demand of water. From our uh, irrigation requirement, domestic requirement, or any other requirements, 
so once we calculate that demand uh, quantity so whether our catchment area is capable to store that amount of water or not based on that we could be able to classify it okay so if the catchment area that we have if it can store more than the demand of our water uh, it can store more amount of water than the demand then we can say it is a good catchment area if the amount of water uh, that can be stored in the catchment area is equal to our demand we can say it as average and if our uh, uh, if our catchment area is not able to uh, store the amount of demand capacity then we can call it as poor catchment area so first what we'll do is we'll find out uh, what is the catchment area we have and then we'll estimate how much is the water that will be available from the catchment area then we'll calculate how much is the demand so from that we can calculate how much is uh, storage capacity that is required so then we will find out what is the balance between the catchment area and storage capacity. So this is the first condition and uh, to understand this uh, what we will do is when we go to design I will try to explain more about this point. Okay? Next going to embankments of drainage line. What is embankments of drainage line? Uh, whatever the river or stream that we have, the embankments that we have for the river or stream whether they are stable or not. If at all the embankment of the river fails what happens? The water will not be stored in our uh, in our in our earthen dam so the amount of water that we wanted to store will not be uh, possible so our embankments must be strong enough to hold more amount of water and next thing is slope of drainage line if the slope of the drainage line or the stream through, across which we are constructing the earthen dam if it is steep so what happens the velocity of the flow will be greater and the impact of that dynamic flow of water will be there on the earthen dam also and the storage capacity also get reduced if it is of steam slope. So what we basically want is a slope which is less than 5%. If the slope of the drainage line is less than 5%, then only we could be able to store more amount of water with less impact on our earthen dam. Next we will go for upstream width of the drainage line. So what we do, you might have seen several streams which are wider in width. Okay. So if the drainage line is wider, then we could, we could be able to store more, more water. If the drainage line is narrower, what happens? We will we'll store less amount of water. So we prefer uh, the upstream width of the drainage line to be wider compared to narrower. Next is to understand the geological condition. As we know uh, in our geology also we understood uh, based on the geological condition itself, we could be able to select any site. Like we need to understand what are the parts, folds what is the kind of strata that we have at the foundation and what is the permeability of the soil we have. So by understanding all of that geological conditions, we could be able to select a suitable site for our construction of earth dams. Next, the important thing is availability of material. I have already explained to you that earth dam is largely made up of the locally available materials. If there is no sufficient quality of material in the nearby site, then uh, there is a possibility of uh, uh, changing the site location also. So the site location is also uh, have a greater importance for the availability of materials in the site. Next is the exit. Exit means uh, the water which is available in access to the storage. How, how does that water will be disposed and what is the exit condition? Based on that also we could select the location. The last one is submergence. So we know that uh, in, 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 in previous videos while explaining the water laws I have explained you that there is a great huge problem with respect to resettlement and rehabilitation of water and there is a submergence of land in the upstream side. When you pound the water what happens in the upstream side the water starts submerging some of the land which was earlier not filled with water. Okay. So because of that submergence uh, there can be uh, villages that can get submerged or the farmland which are very uh, good cultivable uh, farmland can, can get submerged. We need to account all of those submergence lands and we need to estimate, estimate the economic and social impact. Based on that, we must be able to decide the location of earth dam. So these are few of the conditions through which we could be able to identify the optimum or the best suitable location for the earth dams. So going to the next slide, in this what we will try to understand is the runoff. So I have already discussed what is runoff in the uh, in the earlier modules. Runoff is basically the water that flows on the earth, not just on the earth but also beneath the earth surface. Also, there are two types of uh, runoff. One is overland uh, flow, which means the water that flows on the top of the soil, 
the other one is subsurface flow the flow which uh, takes place beneath the soil surface so we need to combine both of them then we will get to know how much is the runoff so runoff for any given catchment area depends on several parameters like for example what is the quality of the soil we have what is the terrain condition we have and how much is the rainfall that happens so hydrological condition topographical condition then we have soil parameters collectively all these parameters will influence the kind of runoff that we are supposed to see so there are several uh, methods through which we could be able to calculate the runoff some of the methods i have noted over here as you can see there are empirical formulas so empirical formulas are those formulas which are derived based on the experience of the scientist okay so then there are curves and tables are there from that also you could be able to calculate the runoff then we have infiltration method so of these methods you will study in your next semester which is hydrology and irrigation engineering there you will study this infiltration method and then we have unit hydrograph method so these two method we will study in our next semester and uh, this uh, overland runoff uh, flow hydrograph also uh, been uh, studied or uh, this is the study material for your next semester okay now what we'll do is we'll discuss about this rational method and some of the empirical formulas which are available to calculate the runoff okay so what is this rational method rational methods are given by several scientists uh, revis is one of the scientists who has also given us to calculate how much is the design discharge for any given hydraulic structure so yield means what yield is the amount of water that can be uh, seen okay so this yield can be calculated from this equation called as cia c is representing the catchment area i is rep uh, sorry c is representing the coefficient sorry C is representing the runoff coefficient, I is representing the precipitation, A is representing the area. So based on the catchment area, intensity of rainfall and the coefficient, I will tell you how the coefficient is judged for any given catchment area. Okay. So based on this we can be calculate, we can easily calculate how much is the runoff or the yield for any given same point. Okay. Now let us look into the uh, runoff coefficients, how do we discuss the runoff coefficients. Okay. So as you can see this is the type of catchment and this is the value of coefficient runoff coefficient okay so if the catchment is rocky and permeable the coefficient will be 0.8 to 1 uh, slightly permeable bare then we have 0.6 to 0.8 cultivated and covered vegetation 0.4 to 0.6 cultivated absorbent soil 0.3 to 0.4 sandy soil 0.2 to 0.3 heavy forest 0.1 to 0.2 now you can see that this runoff coefficient is uh, reducing with respect to these conditions now try to understand what are these conditions is like let us understand these two extremes first is rocky and permeable structure as you can see if the if the structure uh, uh, if, the, if the surface area on which the water is flowing is completely rocky and impermeable if the water is not getting perm uh, penetrated or percolated into the soil what happens most of the runoff, rainfall will be converted into runoff so that's why the coefficient is higher over here now you can go to heavy rainfall forest so what happens in heavy rainforest forest most of the water will be intercepted through the heavy forest and then the water will be stored in the root zone of the forest then the water will flow into the uh, deep aquifers so because of that as you can see the runoff coefficient is very low here okay so this is how we can calculate how much is the design uh, discharge or the flood discharge of any given catchment area okay now there is another method called as strange table strange is a scientist who tried to discover this uh, method of calculating the runoff so what he did is that in, in 1892 he has conducted several experiments on the borders of karnataka and maharashtra the border districts as we know is uh, is our uh, belgam bijapur uh, solapur and all these areas uh, all the catchments in within this boundary he tried to understand and from that he has given us some of the equations through which we could be able to calculate how much is the yield okay now again he has did the same thing he has uh, classified good average and bad catchment areas so how did he classify the good catchment areas uh, based on the soils of low permeability and having little or no soil cover okay like for example you can consider bijap bijapur has a good catchment area because we could be able to catch catch more amount of water in this area because uh, the soil or the stuck soil structure that we have is uh, low permeable and then we have little or no soil cover okay now going to bad bad catchment areas are those having the soils of high permeability and good forest 
or digital cover. So bad attachments. So like this, this is how the classification is done by this person. Okay. Now let us look into some of the equations which are given by Strange. Okay. You can see there is a classification over here for good catchment area based on the amount of rainfall. If the rainfall is less than 250 mm, we can use this equation. What is this equation? Yr is equal to 7 into 10 raised to minus 5 p square. P is representing the precipitation at the given region. Then Yr is representing the yield. Okay. So you can see if the precipitation is less than 250, we will use this equation. And the next is we will go to uh, precipitation between 250 to 760. In that condition, we can use this equation. Like this, for good catchment area, these are the three equations that he has given. From this equation, we could be able to calculate how much is the yield of water. Okay. Like similarly, we have the equation for average catchment areas and then the bad catchment areas. So we can see the regression analysis, regression analysis of all these equations also. So R square represents the regression analysis. I'll simply try to explain what is regression analysis. It is the correlation between the between the actual reading that you get and the predicted reading. Okay. So this correlation explains you how how better we could we are able to predict the runoff yield. Okay. Next is uh, there is another method called as Iglis and Disuza formula. So he has also given us two equation. So you can see this equation can be used for uh, Western Ghats area and this equation can be used for Deccan Plateau. Okay. So like this, uh, you can see English and D'Souza has given us some of the empirical formulas to calculate the yield and then uh, Strange is also given us some of the equations through which we could be able to calculate the yield and we already know there is a rational method which is popularly used to calculate the design discharge of any hydraulic structure. Okay. By understanding this uh, brief uh, overview of estimation of runoff, what we will do is we will try to understand what are the design considerations or the design parameters for the earthen dams. Okay. Now uh, let us uh, look into all these points. First is to select the site for percolation tank. You need to select a, a suitable site with respect to the condition I earlier explained you. Then we need to study the topo sheet. From the topo sheet you could be able to identify how much is the quantity of water that can be stored. Next is uh, compute the uh, catchment area, catchment yield from rainfall runoff coefficients or strange table. I have explained you how we estimate the runoff by you can use any of the formulas or any empirical formulas or curves or tables from that you will be calculating how much is the runoff yield. So once you are done with this, next what we will do is we will try to assume uh, how this tank will be filled, whether there are uh, two or three successive uh, uh, three seasons through which the uh, tank will be filled. From that we could be able to identify what should be the capacity of our uh, percolation tank and how much is the amount of water that can be stored in our percolation tank. So then uh, as we know in our exchange survey lab we might have studied the uh, capacity counters. From the capacity counters we could be able to identify how much is the water that can be stored at different levels or different elevations. Okay. So once you are uh, done with that, we will be calculating how much is the full tank level. Full tank level is the level at which the water stored will be enough for the demand necessity of the given area. Okay. So if the water level reaches to the full tank level, we will understand that the water required for our demand is being stored in our tank. So any amount of water that is stored beyond the full tank level will be excess amount or surplus amount. That surplus amount of downstream side. Okay. Now, uh, then what we will try to understand is what is the free load. I uh, will show you the uh, diagram of the uh, earthen dam. From there, we could be able to understand what is this free board. Free board is the space where there is no water stored. Okay. Uh, I'm back now. Okay. How do we calculate this free board? Free board is calculated by this equation called as 1.5 into HW. HW is representing the height of wave and uh, wave height. Okay. How do we calculate this wave height? Wave height will be calculated from this equation called 0 0.014 uh, dm raised to 0.5. Now let us understand what is this dm. dm is basically called as fetch length. Fetch length is the maximum length which is exposed. Okay. So we will we'll see what is the maximum length in which the, uh, in which the water is being stored and based on that length we will uh, estimate how much is the how much is the uh, what you say like wave height from the wave height we will be calculating how much is the free board that is required 
okay so once this is done we'll also understand what is the settlement okay uh, whenever you construct a dam we know that over that period of time that urban dam will get settled okay it will get reduced with respect to its height so the settlement is basically based on what is the type of soil we have and what are the methods of compaction or consolidation we have adopted for construction of that embankment okay so based on these conditions the settlement will take place so if you try to understand here the settlement varies from 10 percentage of design height or hand compacted if you are if you are use the hand compacted uh, mechanism 10 percentage settlement will take place eventually okay and if it is of uh, machine impacted compacted then there is a 5 percentage settlement that will take place so we need to understand this settlement also while explaining the design i will explain the importance of settlement and also the free board okay okay now uh, there are equations to calculate the top width and then there is a table that is available to calculate upstream and downstream slope of any uh, earth and dam so uh, you might have also studied uh, or you might have already designed the mi tank in your extension survey lab there i gave you a strain table from that table we used to identify the top width of the embankment upstream and downstream slope then the free board also in that in that uh, table we used to identify all of those based on the height of the uh, dam okay so here i give gave you some of the equations from which you could be able to calculate all those parameters okay. so once you calculate uh, sorry once you calculate all these parameters once you calculate all these parameters you could be able to identify what is the cross section of embankment okay next what we will do is uh, there are other handling structures like for example there is surplus tank and then there is a waste uh, sluice i will not be explaining with respect to the sluice i will be explaining the design of waste weir over here so the waste weir length will be calculated from this equation called as cl h raised to 3 by 2 so from this equation we already know how much is the design discharge okay, how, again uh, there are some of the protective covers which are to be designed this is called as computation of horizontal Lord, I will explain you uh, all these equations. Or you can read these slides in order to understand what are the conditions. Anyway, I will be explaining this while solving the problems. Okay. So protective cover means what? Uh, there are horizontal floors, the floors that are to be constructed in upstream and downstream side of the waste weir. So that will be designed. Next, what we will do is I'll I'll just give you a example. Uh, with respect to this example, I'll be designing a. Urban dam. Okay. Let us look, look into the given data we have. The first is the catchment area. What is the catchment area? Yes, 21 hectares, and the intensity of rainfall is 17 centimeter per hour. RL of ground surface is 100 meter. RL of HF. HF means means high flood level is 103. So from this you could be able to understand how much is the amount of maximum amount of water that will be raised in the urban dam. So it will be equals to 103 minus 100, which is 3 meter of water. Uh, will be the maximum height of water that will be stored in there. Then we have runoff coefficient. We know where the runoff coefficient is used. Uh, you remember the rational method, which is uh, U is equals to CIA. U is the runoff coefficient. Okay. I is representing the uh, intensity of rainfall. Then catchment area is 21. Okay. So from this you can calculate how much is the design discharge. Okay. Now we also know what is the soil type and then the saturation slope of saturation line is going to you and assume fetch of uh, fetch length of 500 meter. So uh, let us understand where this fetch length is used. Fetch length is used to calculate how much is dm. From the dm we could be able to calculate how much is the height of the wave. From the height of the wave we could be able to calculate how much is the free wave. Right. So there we will use this. Okay. Now let us look into the solution part. Okay. Now first we will calculate how much is the water height of water uh, up to the HF. So as I told you earlier, one not three minus hundred will give the three meter. Three three meter is the height of water that will be stored at maximum condition in our urban dam. Next we will calculate how much is the height of the waves. Height of wave is calculated from this equation which I gave you earlier. So in this we will substitute dm and find out how much is height of wave. Once you calculate height of wave, we could be able to calculate how much is free board. Free board is equal to 1.5 times of HW, which is 0.46. Right? Now, what should be the height of embankment here? Height of embankment should be equal to the height of water pounded plus of free board. Right? So that's why uh, 3 meter is the height of water that is stored plus of this free board, which will give you the uh, maximum height of the embankment. Okay? Next. 
Next is uh, let us consider the consolidation. Like for example, the material that is used for the earth will get consolidated or it get it gets settled. So let us consider there is a five percentage of consolidation or settlement. So based on that, we will again calculate how much is the height, which is equal to 0.17. So whatever the existing height was there, whatever the existing height was there, which is 3.46, is added with this extra 0.17, which is the allowable settlement in the uh, for the urban impact. Okay, which is uh, how much now? 3.63. Okay. Now once we calculate how much is the height of embankment, we could be able to calculate how much is the top width using this equation. H is representing the height of embankment, total height of the embankment. So substitute this in this equation and calculate how much is the top width of the embankment. Once you calculate the top width of the embankment, you can also calculate. Next is what we'll do is, uh, I gave you earlier uh, a chart. From that chart, uh, we could be able to see if this is a sandy loam, we, we can decide what is the upstream and downstream slope. Let me take you back to that uh, condition for here. See here, based on the type of material, we could be able to decide what is the upstream and downstream slope like required. Uh, as mentioned in the problem, we know it is sandy and uh, sand gravel with central clay core. So we we'll consider this condition. Based on this condition, we can decide what is the upstream and downstream slope. So we have decided how much is upstream and downstream slope. Now, uh, what we are calculated, we calculate how much is the height of embankment, we have calculated how much is the top width, free board and upstream and downstream slope. From this, we could be able to, we could be able to draw the 975, 2.975 meter cube per second. C, which is the runoff coefficient, 17 is the rainfall intensity, then we have 21, which is catchment area. So, based on this, we will be calculating how much is peak discharge. Once we calculate the peak discharge, we could be able to calculate how much is the length of the spillway. So, after calculating the length of the spillway, we can calculate how much is the horizontal machinery floor W1 and W2. W1 is re representing the horizontal floor in the upstream side. W2 is representing the horizontal floor on the downstream side. And how do we calculate this? We will be calculating based on this equation called as D plus of H. Okay. Now, uh, the D is representing the what uh, the level of water up to the high flood level so how much is the height of water up to the high flood level which is 3 meter then 0 0.3 0 0.3 is representing the excess amount of water that will be disposed of which is head of water above the waste layer so based on this we could be able to calculate how much is the horizontal masonry floor w1 and uh, w2 is again calculated by this equation so as you can see this is our cross section of the earth and time so this is our top width this is the height of water level and we can calculate how much is the bottom width. How do we calculate the bottom width? Bottom width is calculated over here, as you can see. Okay. So calculate the bottom width and let us judge what is the saturation line. Okay. I uh, will try to explain what is the saturation line. Saturation line is nothing but the periodic line which we have designed in our uh, my tank. There we have uh, properly designed it. In this, I am not giving you much importance to calculate the periodic line. They have. You can see in, in case of uh, designing the MI tank, the phyretic line was derived with respect to the parabolic equation. Right? So here we are not making that much of an effort to calculate the seepage line or phyretic line. So what we do here is that, uh, let us calculate how much is this length. Like for example, this length. How much is this length? We will calculate. Okay? So this length will be equal to the height of water up to the uh, HFL multiplied by the slope of this slope of this uh, upstream side okay so upstream side slope is 3 multiply the height of water is uh, 3 which will give you the horizontal width from here to here okay from here to here this width okay so once we know this width plus what we'll do is we know the saturation uh, ratio saturation ratio is how much 4 is to 1 or something is given to you then again what we'll do is the height of water will be multiplied by saturation ratio and uh, this sum will give you the length to which the seepage will take place and we must make sure that the seepage of water should be within the uh, within the toe of our uh, earthen dam if the seepage line is within the toe of the dam then we can say that the earthen dam will not fail if this saturation line goes beyond this point what happens 
there is a possibility of earth and time failure okay so see here what is the total uh, bottom width total bottom width is 22.2 and uh, how much is the length of saturation which is equal to 21 meter so that's why we can say our uh, given section is stable like this we could be able to design our earth and time now this is the last bit of this module which is uh, rainwater harvesting in urban areas in all the previous videos we have discussed about how the rainwater is harvested for a micro catchment area or in the rural areas so in this uh, case what we do is we will try to understand what are the different ways through which we could be able to harvest the water in the urban areas okay so now uh, there are three methods one is recharge pit method the next one is recharge uh, trench method then we have two well method okay so first we'll go with recharge pit method and afterwards we can go for the other two okay so what is recharge pit a recharge pit is basically uh, constructed for a small households okay now if the rooftop area is very small there we could be able to adopt this recharge pit so as you can see in this figure this is a small residential area the water that is collected in the roof is being supplied into a small recharge pit so this recharge pit will have different layers of uh, different layers of uh, uh, materials filter material uh, the top one will be of finer one the middle will be of uh, less finer and then we have at the bottom which is completely coarse okay so what happens here we use here as sand in the middle we use uh, the gravel at the bottom we use the boulders so by this we could be able to filter the water which is coming from the uh, from the rooftop and the water flows through the ground water and it will recharge the ground water now there are some uh, precautions that have to be taken uh, before the water reaches here we must be able to uh, put a screen so that the screen will remove all the plastic or leaves or any other filler material or all the floating materials it will try to remove off all of that then the water will be disposed onto this pit and the water that is disposed into the pit will recharge the water table so this is what this uh, recharge pit is all about okay next we will go to recharge trench uh, when earlier what you you can see this earlier figure this is a small household in this case it is a considerably large households or you can say set of residential areas when the uh, rooftop area is greater compared to the earlier condition what we do is that there is huge amount of water in that case a single recharge pit is not capable to recharge